YouTube, welcome to the top 16 every single week by watching as long as you can, even if I'm on in the background. YouTube tells me about it. It helps the algorithm by liking, commenting, subscribing, and watching. Thank you very much. Hajime. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. What are we starting off with? We have Diablo Star, the Black Witch, discarding to special summon to then set up with an original sinful spoils to then send the Diablo Star to special summon from the deck, our Snake Eyes Ash. Just like that, let's get to it as we are going to then set up into our back or our Mascarina. So think about this, if they were to have Nibiru'd, they'd lose their whole field, the field spell will summon the Flamebirds from the back row, then the Flamebirds would then equip the Mascarina and we'd still, you know, be in a decent spot. We have Ambla Whale turning off our fire restriction as the Link Rebo then summons itself back onto the field, tributing over the Ash, now back to two pack. We do have Lava Golem plus evenly matched, which could completely decimate this field, banishing everything but one card. What do we leave up? <laughs> oh my God, this is a huge counter. Leaving up just the Flame Burst. Now we do have Promethean Princess as disruption on the summon of Unicorn, popping the Flame Burst and Unicorn, which will trigger the Flame Burst to summon Oak, summon Ash. We could add Poplar. We could summon Poplar with the effect of the Oak, or we could just summon the Poplar itself just like that, grabbing an Ash for the next turn. We have Theosis being used onto the Rise Heart to summon a Fenrir. Fenrir searching our deck for a Scare Claw Kashtira here. As we cross out Designate, banish a Birth, which is still negated for the turn, as we then summon the Scare Claw Kashtira by banishing Theosis, which will then grab the banished Birth back to our hand. Okay, that's fine. We're then going to exceed into our Kash Tira Shang-Ri, using the Rise Heart to trigger the Shang-Ri by locking up a zone on the field, which we can now overlay over a Kash Tira for the Arise Heart, one of the main counters against Snake Eyes, the main reason to play Kash Tira, which is gonna be just like here. This is it. This is gonna be our one card Arise Heart. Anything sent to the graveyard will be banished instead. We are setting up the birth, which is negated by Cross Out Designate just for the rest of this turn. All right, let's start locking up the main monster zones, yes? Now, the Arise Heart does not have the ability to banish a card in the field yet. It needs two more materials. So it needs two more cards to get banished. By destroying our Fenrir, we'll equip the Big Bang. We just need one more card to get banished. Reborning with our only empty monster zone left until the Shang-Ri locks it up, triggering the Unicorn, which will then trigger the Arise Heart, which will then allow the Rise Heart to now banish any card on the field. Do we banish on resolution or do we wait? What are we afraid of? Uh, Zelantis is not a trigger effect on summon, so we could wait for the summon. We're not waiting. We're gonna banish the Flame Burge off the field. So the Snake Eyes Flame Burge Dragon in the open game state would be able to activate to push the Arise Heart into the back row so it was actually emergent that we use the Arise Heart on resolution of gaining that third material. So I think we screwed up. By attacking Fenrir and not summoning Flame Burge first, we had the out to Arise Heart, but then the Arise Heart outed our out because we gave them the out to out or out that outs the out. Yes? Now we're gonna bang our Shang-Ri, and by banging our Shang-Ri, we're gonna grab the Scareclaw Cash Tira back to our hand and summon it back on the field. The Osis is also grabbing the banished Rise Heart to put it back to our hand. But he had Fenrir on the field. Uh, yeah, so, you know, Fenrir outed our out, so we, by outing the out to our out, we then gave them another out to our out. Yes, so the, the we outed the out that outed our out to their out. Come forth, grab back the Scare Claw Cash Tira, resummoning back onto the field here. So, you know, uh, LTG did not make a mistake, I'd say. Returning Diablo Star back in the deck to grab our Jet Synchron, which we cannot normal summon. We don't have room to summon it. Oh my gosh, what the heck? Linking off into Sunlight Wolf. We do now have room to normal summon our Jet Synchron if we want to. Instead, we're gonna summon our Ash. Triggering the Sunlight Wolf, which will be adding a Fire Monster in the Griver back to our hand. If we have an Ash, we could recycle it if we want to. Whoa, Kurikara, huh? Who activated? You activated. You activated. You activated. That's a 3K, 45, 6,000 attack, Kurikara. Let's go. <laughs> Poplar summoning. Further linking this off into a Sprite Elf, making our other monsters, it's pointing to... Bro, you timed out with Kurikara? What happened here? 
Battle phase two? Yeah, but uh, we still had Curry Kara, right? What happened? Reed Wolf? Oh my gosh, you can't summon the monster you had back that turn. You're right. Yeah. Wolf's not that good. It's pretty good, but not that good. So it was almost really good, but uh, we could not summon it. You add the fire, you could activate the fire, but you can't summon the fire. So what I was saying was a TCG only play, I'm sorry. Uh, let's go into game number two. We're activating our wand. Don't do what I said, don't do that. We're going to chain Max C to the wanted as we add the Diablo Star. Diablo Star does not activate to special summon. So you do want to activate your Max C before it's summoned if you don't care about Gamma. Ash, add Poplar, Poplar trigger, come forth and summon. How much do we want to do against Max C though? Are we out of our damn mind? We are setting up with the Flame Burge linking into the Max, uh, we could end just like this. This is okay because if your opponent just breathes, if they summon normal or special, it will trigger the field spell to summon the Flame Burge. And then, you know, we got a decent play off of that, right? Poplar equip into the back row, focus, let's go. Maxi in the draw phase, Ash to negate. All right, we're good, we're good, we're good. On the summon of the Fenrir, that will trigger the field spot to summon the Flame Burge, which does not trigger the Fenrir. We could then use Mascarina to link off. Oh, okay, we are using the Flame Burge, but now on this activating to banish, we could chain the Mascarina to the effect to banish. Okay, let's go. Trigger effect to Ash. Then chain Mascarina to make our Apollo USA. Now the Fenrir can attack over Apollo USA, right? Well, did we summon a Link Karibo? I don't think we did because of Max C. Yeah, generally you would have Link Karibo to protect you from the Fenrir. Now Fenrir is not bigger, but it could suicide into the Apollo, which we may be seeing. Oh my gosh, we're using Nibiru on our own turn. Huh? <laughs> what? Okay, we're just dropping it down uh, by 800 attack. That's fine. Sure. Minus 800. Grabbing our original Sinful to be used next turn. Triggering the Fenrir as the Apollo then drops down further down to 800. Are we not going to eat up the battle phase to take out the... Oh, we are. Okay. So wipe it out. That's fine. And now we're going to main phase two. Theosis on Fenrir summoning a Unicorn. Unicorn search our deck for a Kashtira spell. Grabbing the Birth. If you hate Snake Eyes, do consider playing Kashtira as anyone playing it in the tournament is playing it because of Snake Eyes. We got Shang-Ri. Shang-Ri could lock up a monster zone, being triggered by the effect of the Rise Heart. We are now going to be able to summon our one card, a Rise Heart. We're going to bang our Shang-Ri, returning the Fenrir to then summon the Fenrir. Fenrir limited to one, by the way. Very well done. And now we got our Birth. Birthing our Ogre onto the field, searching our deck for the preparation. Preparation can look at the opponent's hand and banish a card if you activate a trap against the preparation. Preparation, more importantly, could summon a cash terror that's banished or from the hand, but not from the grave. That is our one card to rise heart play. Now we have the Dark Armed Annihilation, which could pop cards on the field that will get banished through the effect of a rise heart. Let's get popping. Let's pop again. Double pop, double banished. Poplar banished. Double Ash is now banished. We have three material under our Arise Hearts. We have the effect to target any card in the field and banish it face down. We also have negate a monster and take control of it through the UDF. This is looking good. Well, we do have Kurikara to really screw them up. So to use the Kurikara, you want to have any card get banished, which will trigger the Arise Heart through its mandatory effect playing right into the Kurikara. But the problem is, how do we trigger its effect? Can we use Sinful Spoils? Send a card you control to the graveyard by cost. So this is an illegal activation. How about Diablo Star? Summon this by sending a card to the graveyard. That's illegal. So we can't even use these cards to trigger the effect. I guess what we would do is we could Poplar, make Link Karibo, which would then banish the Poplar, trigger the Arise Heart, then we could go into Kurikara. But is that tricking them into UDFing? Let's see what we do. We may just curry car the Arise Heart and nothing else. We also have Triple Tactics Talent. What did I just say? What did I say? Link Curry but Poplar was our only play. Trigger the Arise, and now we could curry car or take control of TTT. We're banishing on resolution because we know that curry car is in the hand, right? Did we search it? We're going to bang our Arise Heart with a unicorn attached to it. 
Return the unicorn, summon the unicorn onto the fields. Very well done. Is it worth it to Kurikara? We're still doing it because as I said, you can't Diablo Star. You can't use the original Sinful. Those cards are turned off while Arise Hearts on the field. Preparation, reborning the Ogre. We could Triple Tactics Talent, take control of the UDF or Fenrir. Taking the UDF, which can negate the Fenrir. Birth is triggering to banish three cards from our graveyard face down. Rip, our wanted effect to draw a card. Send the Flame Burge with no level one fires in the graveyard to trigger its effect to reborn them. Now, the UDF has to go back to the opponent during the end phase. So we got to link off with it. Got to get rid of it. Got to send it to the graveyard, maybe. We're going to use the original Sinful, summoning the Ash. Ash on summon will grab the Poplar. Poplar on add will activate the special summon itself onto the field, which we are then going to be linking into a Dark. Dark steal a Dark monster from the opponent's graveyard, like the Arise Heart. I, okay. <laughs> I'm out. Now, is stealing a Rise Heart good? It would be making your own cards get banished when sent to the graveyard, and I don't think Cash Tier really cares so much about their cards getting banished. The stolen a Rise Heart would become good if you were able to banish enough where it would gain three materials to so then banish a card in the field face down. And uh, how did he time out on the other person's turn? He had Nibiru asking him, right? It was Nibiru. It was a uh, shifter's not activatable if you have a card in the graveyard. It was Nibiru, right? Yeah, uh, which the UDF could have negated. Let's uh, set call by end. What the heck? You're the best deck. Yes, we are. All right. We have Unicorn on summon here. Uh, not a trigger effect, but activating to then search for our birth. Birthing a monster onto the field through our Rise Hearts. We are then making a what the heck are we doing? <laughs> what? This is wild. This is lethal damage play back in the day. No one was doing this, but I talked about it by making an absolute dragon sending it to the graveyard, get ready. We are going to be summoning from the extra deck. Oh, damn, damn you. <laughs> so what we're gonna summon is we are gonna do the Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon Overload play. 3,000 attack, attack three times. That's 10,000 damage with the gravity controller. 3K, 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 10K with the gravity. Ash is going to negate the Fenrir from searching for a Cash Tira here. Sure. We are then pot of Dian, pot of it up, banishing 10 cards from the top of our deck. Did we lose anything too good here? No, we're, we're okay. This is fine. And all we ended on was just a Fenrir. Well, we have Ash and Maxi backed up with that Fenrir. We, we still bricked. What the brick is this? We got nothing. We could Harpy Feather Duster wipe up the birth so that they don't get the ability to summon without tributing or summon a banish or engrave Cash Tira. Sure. Then we are searching our deck for nothing as the Ash will negate alternative art Ash. I'm still thinking if I want a second and third copy. I, so I spent 1K gems on stream. I got her in the first 1K. Since that stream, I think I've spent 9k gems, maybe 10k gems to get a second copy. I have not gotten a second copy. That thing's a damn scam. We got Baron to floor with the Omni Negate. 600 life left. Maxi within the draw phase. We could... Uh, the Baron floor is not going to activate in response to that. You're not going to be able to curry car that. <laughs> we, we didn't lose to Cash Tira. We lost to ourselves. We bricked. So it happens when you don't have bonfire, right? No bonfire. The deck needs bonfire. Let's go. We are Ling G true story, right, Gia? We have Lingaribo to negate the evenly match. That's pretty good. And impermanence, triggering the summon of the Parallel Seed, summoning another Parallel Seed from the deck to then make our Alan Burt. We are activating, grabbing, not a hand trap here. So what are our disruptions? The terror hurts can trigger an effect to negate a card on the field. So let's say they activate dimensional fissure. You could chain terror hurts to send an aggregator from the extra deck to the grave. That's right, to the grave. It does not get banished yet. It then will activate targeting the dimensional fissure after it resolves to then negate it. So then your cards are not being banished. So we already got the counter for that. So that's one disruption. We have Imperm, we have Valor, we have Nibiru, we have Super Factorial, which is a double disruption. It's Send plus Negate. We have six disruptions plus the Heat Soul could maybe draw into a seventh card. So the situation here with Evenly Matched is you're gonna have to, at the start of the battle phase, activate the Super Factorial if you get tricked 
into doing so to summon your negate to negate the evenly match before they activate it. Uh, so I'm really excited for this play. How is this going to work out? Activating the draw phase, playing around the triple tactics talent. Instead of using aggregator, we're instead going to send a disave worm to negate the evenly matched. Evenly matched? No good. Now there's no mind game with it. There's no worry. We're also tossing in a max C into the mix. So evenly negated on top of all of the other disruptions we have. The dimensional fissure, if it were to not be negated, turns off effect veiler. So effect veiler would be a minus negate off of that dimensional fissure play. But maybe it's better we don't reveal that we're playing those cards so that we can go into game two and three with a higher surprise factor. Yes. One card full power. Let's say real quick, was it fair for this card on release to be limited to one and nothing was preemptively limited for Snake Eyes? Is that kind of uh, Konami went too hard in on the second anniversary to maximize, ma maximize profits over balance? Is that the situation? Should Poplar have came out uh, maybe limited? So we do have the quick effect of banish a card in the field face down and any card sent to the grave is banished. Let's go, let's go. We are small world in, which is going to trigger the Arise Heart to suck up a banished card under it. That's fine. So our main play is going to be the Parallel Exceed. In response to the activation of the Parallel Exceed, you could banish the link and then it doesn't summon. We got to do something here. If we allow the diameter to perform a, an Exceed play, then it's going to be able to negate the Arise Heart. So we have to banish the diameter right here, right now. Detach, banish, as we said, and that's it. That's the one copy of Diameter. There's no more Diameter for the rest of this duel. Unless the Arise Heart sucks it up and then the Arise Heart's dealt with, thus it would then go to the grave, so it should not do that. Grabbing back Unicorn with the Banish Theosis. We're gonna link this up into a Lingaribo, summoning into the correct spot here, triggering our Parallel Exceed. If we summon the Lingaribo here, it would have been blocked off by the subtraction. Do we, if, we, here's an interesting thing. If we use Impermanence to negate the Parallel Exceed, it becomes level eight, and it does not summon another parallel exceed from the deck, but then they could start linking off into something like an access code talker. What do we do? We're not negating, we're allowing it. We're going to Nibiru instead, tributing the entire field. Now, because the Arise Heart was sent to the grave at the same time as the other monsters, they don't get banished. 8,300 attack token. It makes sense. If you summon this into defense, then you can't summon your cash heroes. So you summon it into attack, you do lose your battle phase, but now you could summon your cash heroes. This is why initially on cash heroes release, a lot of people were saying, don't play Nibiru in your deck because of this reason. I mean, it's still good, right? Uh, the Nibiru helped out a lot. They were gonna link climb into something crazy. Now the transcode talker would not have been able to reborn to the grave because the arise heart in the field. So it would have been a little bit different. We got Birth, we got Unicorn, we got Fen Rear. It's all main phase two. Banishing the Ogre, banishing cards off the top of the deck, birthing an additional Unicorn onto the field. Big Eye, take control of the 8300 token. <laughs> okay, come on over here. Now on the resolution of a monster effect, we can banish a card from the extra deck and banish a card that's face up, face down. Very well done. Our cash, is Cash Tira back or what? Now, What's really interesting to me is if I go on to Yu-Gi-Oh! Meta, which is going to be released soon, I promise, and I go on the tier list, Cash Tier is a top three deck in the TCG right now. And you may be thinking, yeah, well, Cash Tier is pretty good, right? Oh, Rise Heart's banned. Did they don't have a Rise Heart? This is how they're playing it. Well, are you kidding me? No Rise Heart, and it's a top three deck? Starting off with Dimensional Shifter, forcing any card sent to the grave to be banished instead. Can Sinet Mining be activated? No, it's an illegal activation. The cost is to send a card to the graveyard, so we don't get to search. Now we're gonna be summoning a Lingaribo, which will trigger the Parallel Exceed to summon itself onto the field. We forgot to Max C, because Max C cannot be used under the lingering effect of Dimension Shifter, saying that it cannot be sent to the grave by cost. Now Ash can still be used, and the correct way to do this is you chain Maxi to your own shifter. If you Maxi chain shifter, that's illegal. It does not work. Come forth, eat soul. Uh, you know, was this a mistake? Should we have uh, chained it to it? Eat soul drawing a card every turn. Get drawing within the draw phase. Come to me. 
Now the opponent can't max CU. That's also a great benefit of Dimension Shifter. Grabbing the Unicorn into Theosis, Theosising our Unicorn to grab a Fenrir from the deck, summoning onto the field to then grab a Rise Heart, which will special summon if we control a Cash Tira. We have not used up our normal summon yet. Banishing a Theosis, which could grab an Ogre if we wanted. We're going to use the Scareclaw Cash Tira, making so all our Cash Tira monsters will negate any monster we battle into. Unicorn on attack, looking at the extra deck, banishing the one of Laplacian. A lot of people play just one. Some play two. We're then going to main phase two this up into Cash Tira Rise Heart, further turning off the Cynet Mining. Now, Dotscaper states if this card sends the Grave Reborn, so that does not work. The Firewall Defensor, what does this say? If sent to the Grave, activate, so that doesn't work. Cynet Mining, does not work, and uh, let's go. And also Circular can't send a card from the deck to the grave, so the whole deck is essentially shut down. We're, we're gonna small world for something, something good. Uh, an effect Veiler that can't even be used with a Rise Heart on the field. <laughs> we do have the quick effect to banish any card in the field uh, that is banished, so it's not gonna trigger. So we just have an Al Mirage, which normally would have triggered Dotscaper to summon. Wait. I read it incorrectly. I read the first line. If this card is sent to the grave, you can special summon this card. If this card is banished, why does it say it like this? I And you can only use one effect, and why doesn't it just say, if sent to the grave or banished, summon this card? What the heck is that? Okay, uh, grave or banished. It does reborn. My bad. Uh, you, that redundant card text made me think otherwise. But what can we do from there? Splash Mage, there's nothing to reborn with Splash Mage. Transcode Talker, we can't even make it, but then we can't reborn the Splash Mage because it's banished. A Rise Heart countering Snake Eyes and other decks like it. To battle we go, Almirage will protect the Dotscaper, but that's not really good protection. We're gonna be banishing the Dotscaper off the field face down as we then finish off this duel. Lethal damage attack directly, finish him. Cash Tira, in a way, is anti-meta. Defeat the meta with anti-meta Cash Tira. Very nice. We're gonna have to play through Ash and Nibiru. So when do we Ash? I think Ashing the Rhyme Heart is a pretty good play here. We're not gonna be Ashing that. Are we saving the Ash for a field spell? Obsidian pops to search for field spell. We didn't Ash that. We're on summon number two. Do we Ash this? This is when we're Ashing? Okay. The other field spell could be something that will also search for the Vsauce Starfrost, which is normally what the Peaceful Planet is searching for. Let me fix the in-game volume. Thank you. Call for the Grave, fingering that Ash negate. Thank you. Appreciate you, Chad. Thank you for helping me out. Got the Vsauce Starfrost. Pop the ball. What happens when you pop a ball? You get two balls. One pop, two balls. The ball itself will summon a ball from the deck. The field spell will summon the ball from the grave. The ball from the deck will be level four. So we are on summon number one, two, three, four, five. Just like that, we are going to Nibiru the field, tributing everything, giving them a decent sized token here. But we could still banish from our graveyard to summon a Vicious Astroloud, which will pop the Nibiru on summon, wipe that fool out. But we don't have any public disruption. We just have the Imperm, the Ash, and nothing in the grave that could disrupt. So Imperm on the opponent's Snake Eyes Ash is actually an incredible play. It's a good one. It's why I think a card like Valor should be played more. Valor on Ash is also great. Let's go, let's go. Ash on summon, Imperm, Negate. It kind of rem reminds me of when Sword Soul came out on release. People weren't really playing the uh, Valor. Valor really good on Mo Yi. And I think we're kind of going back to that. You're gonna want to play Valor and Imperm maxed out in your deck. Anima is only if you summon your monster in the wrong zone, behind an extra monster zone. We're gonna suck up that Astroloud for free. <laughs> Yoink! We are now gonna be discarding Poplar to summon our Diablo Star. Diablo Star on summon, being chain link bo blocked by the Poplar, so it cannot be negated by a card like Apollo USA if there were to be one on the field. Equipping into the back row, and we also have our Sinful Spoils. Sinful Spoils send a card we control to the grave. It must be face up for the Ash to negate. If your opponent summons a Snake Eyes Ash and you have an Ash, I think it's better to save your Ash for either a Sinful Spoils or the Ash effect of sending itself to the grave to summon a monster from the deck. I think both of those are pretty good Ash uses. 
But didn't you finger the ash? Yeah, you fingered ash, which fingers your own ash. So you got fingered with your own finger. Negate! <laughs> Damn, that sucks. Now, Oak is here, reborn the Poplar, Poplar on summon, grabbing the field spell, which will set up a flame burst into the back row. Set it up, or an ash, sure, instead. Sending the ash to then summon a flame burst from the deck, which could reborn the ash from the grave, which will then trigger the ash effect. Pushing the token that we gave them into our own back row, opening up the field for lethal damage, thanks to the Anima sucking up the ash aloud, giving it 3,000 attack for game. Did we lose because of Astral Loud being in the extra monster zone column? No, we still would have lost, but uh, it was still funny to see. We are setting up with our Scareclaw search, which could also grab a Vsauce. The Drone Lockbird does shut down Monadium quite hard, where Drone Lockbird does not affect Snake Eyes as much, but that's okay. We are fingering that Droll, negate. And the Monadium deck is much better when you draw the Monadium half of the deck instead of the Scareclaw version only. But Imperm on Rhymeheart's gonna screw things up a little bit here. And what sucks is they added too much restrictions to Vsauce, I'm thinking. I, I don't think that Monadium was made correctly. I feel like the field spell for Monadium is also weird because it boosts up your monster, which then makes it so you can't summon the Rhymeheart. Like, it, it's not cool. And then the Vsauce can't pop the Rhymeheart to summon here, which would have then allowed us to further cook if we didn't already activate a Scareclaw field spell. It's kind of an awkward deck. We have one for one, which must discard a monster. Had we not had Ash, that this would have not been a play. We have Imperm, which I think is the best out to a Snake Eye Ash. We do have an original Sinful follow-up here, though, which, what do we do? We're gonna be sending the Snake Eye to the graveyard to then summon for the deck and Oak. Oak reborn the Ash, and get ready for linking this off into a Link Karibo. So we're not sending to summon from the deck yet. We're gonna send the Link Karibo to summon from the deck a Poplar. Poplar grabbing a Field Spell. Field Spell could set up a Flame Burge into the back row, waiting for the opponent to summon. And for some reason, the Field Spell boosts up these tiny level one fires to be quite large. We have Magna Hut, which will trigger the Field Spell to summon the Flame Burge onto the field here, which is not turning into disruption. You have Link Karibo tributing the Poplar. Poplar will then trigger to equip another card into the back row, which will then I think Oak would be good, right? You put Oak into the back row, then you could summon Oak with the Flame Burge to at least ensure you're not gonna lose next turn, right? There you go, exactly what I said. Put the Oak in the back row. We do have a Lubellion during the end phase being added. Is Dark Roller No More worth running? I don't think so because you Dark Roller No More the fields against Snake Eyes. And then what do they have? They have a Mascarina in the back row that they maybe didn't summon yet. If you summon it, will trigger the field spell to summon it. They also have a Promethean Princess in the graveyard generally, which the Dark Lord Amor is not going to be affecting, which will be popping the Flame Burge, which will then will trigger to summon a bunch of bodies in the field, which will not be affected by the Dark Lord No More. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. We have Lubellion grabbing the Druid Swarm. The Bistials inherently are not so good against Snake Eyes because they're not dark. Vsauce triggering the field spell to summon the Oak. Oak reborn the Ash. Ash search for a level one fire, which will be the Poplar, which will trigger to summon itself onto the field searching for an original sin is what I'm thinking. Yep, we got the original sin ready for next turn. Everything in attack position, by the way, we are not afraid. Lightheart on summon, grabbing a Scareclaw field spell, which I think we don't play another copy, so we didn't activate on summon. We are declaring an attack into the Link Kariba, forcing it to reduce the Light Heart so we could follow up with the Druid Swarm, wiping out of monsters, sending to the grave through the effect of Lubellion, triggering the Druid Swarm to send another card in the field to the grave, which must be a special summon monster, as the Imperm negates Lubellion from setting up a branded Speller Trap into the back row. Now, there was a ruling question on Reddit that was really confusing for the player involved, and I answered that ruling for them, and maybe I could show it on stream, for a situation that may be affecting someone else. We are using Anaconda, sending a brain infusion from the deck to the grave to make a Mirror Jade because we cannot special summon beyond our activation. So it must go right into the Mirror Jade. And by sending a Rinbrum, Rinbrum could reborn the Albaz to then fuse the opponent's field if we have a card in the hand to discard. We're gonna be using the Call by the Grave to negate the Poplar. 
Do not equip into the back row, which would then work with the Divine Temple, also working with the original Sin. Very well done. And now back to you. We have the original Sin searching our deck for a level one fire, which will be our Ash. Ash can't add Poplar to trigger the Poplar, so what are we adding instead? We're adding a Jet Synchron, but we already used up our normal summon. We're gonna be sending ourselves plus the Link Rebo to summon a Flame Burge from the deck, which could push the Mirror Jade into the back row. And with Mirror Jade in the back row, it still has an effect, but not a good one. The effect is you can only control one Mirror Jade. You control Mirror Jade, so you can't summon another one if it's in the back row. What the hell? We have Diablo Star setting up into the back row, a Wanted Seeker to be used during the next turn. Jet Synchron, Discard, Reborn, as we then link this up into IP Mascarina. That will trigger the Flame Burst to Reborn two level one fires. I don't know what to say. It feels like the deck is just on a different level and Monadium's quite new. This is like we power crept a deck that I think is just one month new. Now Monadium came out uh, like two months ago, but the newly released support is I think within a month newly released and it's already not that good. What the heck? Lethal damage. 2-0, 2-0. Yeah, that's how it happens. That is expected. Uh, it's not Behad's fault. Behad is a good player. It's just the better deck uh, is a better deck. Starting off with our Unicorn, then activating the Reinforcement. So if we were to chain Ash to the Reinforcement, we would then be able to look at the opponent's extra deck and then banish a card face down. Grabbing a Birth, Special Summoning our Rise Heart as we now hit him with the Max C. So we're gonna be looking at that extra deck, choosing to banish, but generally you triple up on Rex Term and you triple up on Kentrogena, which is exactly what we're doing. We have triple Kentrogena, triple Rex Term. One of our Kentroginas are now banished. Ogre grabbing a preparation. The preparation could be good against impermanence. If it's already face up and the opponent activates impermanence, they then get to look at your hand and get rid of a card. Now, any card sent to the grave will be banished instead. And the Arise Heart does have the quick effect to banish a card in the field face down. Pot of Duality, lock on us out a special summoning for the rest of the turn. Dynamorphia Intact is gonna be the way to negate and destroy the Arise Heart. But the Arise Heart could banish the Intact through YOLO. We could randomly YOLO banish a face down card. Preparation will use the other effect of summoning a Cash Tira from the hand or banish, getting our Fenrir out. Now, does Fenrir trigger here? No. Fenrir was not on the field when the monster effect was activated, so it will not trigger. We're setting up the Frenzy into the back row so we know exactly where it is. We probably want to banish that directly, right? And don't even make it random. Yeah. <laughs> Do not random your banish. Going straight for that Frenzy directly set there. Now we have Intact ready. Fenrir, oh, we're using Intact on the Fenrir. Now, the Birth could just reborn it back on the field and still use the effect of banishing a face-up card in the field by declaring an attack with it. We're instead gonna use, oh, Preparation's also being triggered. Preparation's looking at your hand, banishing the Therizia. Oh, that hurts. And we are sucking up the Intact. Sucking up a Maxi also. And we're now gonna further banish, we're going for the Trap Trick which will banish any normal trap from the deck to then set that normal trap from our deck. And what would be good? We're at 4,000 life. The card that shuffles the field back in the deck, we're setting up a frenzy. We got the frenzy, we could summon the Rex turn. This is it. Rise Heart continually sucking up materials. It cannot banish again. Frenzy is here. Ash negate, ain't no way. Damn. Now, Dynamorphia were given Dynamorphia intact for Ash, but we used intact on Fenrir instead. Did, should we have maybe saved it for the Ash, which I believe is the main purpose for that deck type being given the intact? Maybe. Let's hop into game number two. Fossil, Dig, grabbing a Therizia, and uh, the Mad Lab, uh, uh, Bear, you wanted me to read your message? I'll read that in a bit. We have Imperm onto the Therizia, attempting to set a card from the deck onto the field. You cannot Ash this, so Imperm is gonna be the ideal use here. And we have Dimension Shifter against a deck that does not care about it. We also can't use Dimension Shifter. Call by the Grave is going to be fingering that Max C, thus you will not be drawing per special summon. 
We are gonna have to whip out that pot of pee. Pot of pee, is it fairly limited to one? Should it go back to two or three? I guess the idea is, I think it was limited for the main reason of searching for a floodgate within the top six. I think it was limited mostly because of Fluanderese or, or Runic. I, I forget which one it was limited for. I think it was Fluanderese, which hurt a lot of rogue decks out because a lot of rogue decks are less consistent than the good decks. So they would use the Prod of Prosperity not to search for a floodgate, but to search for a combo piece. We have Theosis onto the Unicorn, summoning Fenrir from the deck. The problem with Pot of P not only searching for a Floodgate, it also it just being used in good decks, making them more consistent, is also an issue. Pot of P and Kashtira also had uh, additional benefits, banishing cards like Goliath, which will then give your Exceed, a Rise Heart, even more benefits. Banishing the Theosis. What the heck? 2,700 onto the field by burning ourselves for 3,000 life. And just like that, with over 9,000 damage on the field after simply negating the Therizia, we don't have game because Pot of P having our damage. <laughs> okay. Not game. Not game. We have a Rise Heart. Anything sent to the grave is banished instead. Well, we use Dimension Shifter ourselves, so I'm thinking we don't really care. We know exactly where that Frenzy is set. It's not activatable the turn it was set. Thus, the Arise Heart will very simply at the end phase banish it off the field, just like that. Goodbye. Now Alert can summon two Dynamorphias from the grave. And we have nothing in the grave. Yeah, I mean, uh, you are collateral damage to Kash Tira beating you. Unfortunately, they're playing Kash Tira to counter Snake Eyes and you just came across them on their way to doing that. Begin. Ash on summon, Imperm or Veilor is the best response to a Snake Eyes Ash. That limited to one cross out designate a card that's at three in TCG. That is wild for when you're playing mirror matches, banishing main deck cards like a Flame Burge to negate your opponent's Flame Burge. Elf Reborn, the Formula Synchron, making the Formula Synchron untargetable so it can activate during the main phase to Synchro during the opponent's turn. We are now in the main phase, activating Flame Burst to summon the Mascarina. Are we chaining the Formula Synchron? Yes, we are. Chain untargetable Formula Synchron, Synchroing with the Flame Burst to make a Baron de Floor. Plus trigger the Flame Burst to summon up to two level one fires. And then we're gonna have Mascarina, which could link off of the field into an Apollo USA. Now what we have here is Vega on summon, summoning a monster from the hand, Lyran also being chained to summon itself. It's gonna add a Teller Knight spell from the deck to the hand on summon, as the Anuk's gonna send a Teller Knight card from the deck to the grave. So let's see what we could do in response to this massive field they're setting up. The Alteran states that you could special summon this card from the graveyard and uh, destroy cards in the fields. You could target cards on the field up to the number of light and dark exceed monsters you control, destroy them. Will we even be able to pull that off? We're making a Deltaros. Now, Deltaros has some effect that could be quite important here. It states that while this card has an exceeds material, your opponent cannot activate cards in response to your summons. Think of Branded Lost. Alteran, so we can't chain to that. And, and then we also can't chain to this activation on summon. While it has an Xyz material, they cannot chain to normal or special summons. So can't respond. Can't respond. Holy moly. Completely unrespondable, reborning and popping just one card. Now we can respond as we now make an Underworld Goddess. Well, Deltros more than once per turn could summon from the deck, the hand or deck. So we are negating the altar and the goddess was not negating the effect of someone from the deck. The neb is going to be negated from adding a card from the deck to the hand. While we're going to have it leave the field going back to the deck, it's still negated by the Baron to floor. It does not matter where the card went. Altair will on summon reborn the Deltaros, which we then want to get Deltaros back in the grave to then summon another monster from the deck. But the goddess is negating the effect to summon from the grave. We didn't have another trigger effect to chain link block the Altair here, unfortunately. And then we got Caduceus, which could banish a card from the deck to copy its effect. Also on summon, it could return cards in the grave back to our hand. 
So it looks like we're not gonna be able to copy a car from the deck as the Promethean Princess is gonna be popping it, which is not a trigger effect nor a quick effect, unfortunately. So we do lose out on that as we recycle our Lyran and our Sky Bridge, which is only activatable once per turn. And we have no other way to get another body on the field. And this is what happens when a rogue deck plays against the best deck in the game. Lethal damage. But now we get to go first. So let's see what we can do. Part of Snake Eyes being the best deck in the game is the fact that they could play a ton of hand traps. Nibiru's, Imperms, Ash Max C. They got room for it all. So very likely our turn one will be disrupted for game two. Let's see. Reinforce the army, grabbing our Lyran, which will trigger on the summon of our monster. Vega on summon will special summon a Satellar Knight from our hand. Lyran will be summoned separately here. We are not using our impermanence yet. We have Altair, which would reborn a monster from the grave, which we don't have one to reborn. We have Skybridge, which could return a Teller Knight to summon a Teller Knight from the deck. This is seven material turn skip. It looks like just five, but with the Constellar Teller Knights, it's gonna make it seven materials. So this is five materials initially. Now we got our Caduceus. Now, this is five material plus the seventh card being, it's six material plus the M7 being the seventh material. So we're gonna use the Constellar Telenites to overlay the Ptolemus for the turn skip. This is it. Skip the turn. Seven materials. And you activate it during the main end phase because it's a quick effect and you can't get Veilard in the end phase. But what can you get done to you during the end phase? The imperm. Wait, we didn't do it. it is a trick. It's not even a trick. It's not a quick effect. Detach seven, skip your opponent's turn. So I think we feel that there's an impermanence and we're not doing it uh, for that reason. So in the TCG, we would have done it because you can't really know that they have impermanence unless they try to, you know, make it obvious. But we saw the field light up multiple times on our activations or just on summon. So we are definitely playing around the impermanence. Yeah. Okay, sending a monster so we could chain the Sky Bridge, then chain the Ptolemus, but then whatever we summon will get negated. Is that worth it? Chaining Maxi. Okay. Uh huh. Whatever we summon is going to get negated. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Special summon from the action deck of Durendal. Now, Durendal states that when a monster effect, spell, or trap is activated, you could detach a material to negate, but we are negated. So we dodged the untargetable negate to then be negated on our newly summoned monster. Droll on add, you can no longer add. Wait, did we max C? Who max C? The opponent max. Okay, so our Droll turned off their max C and them from further adding. You don't want to droll your own maxi, by the way. So if we were to maxi, then droll ourselves, that would have been very bad. Uh, I think we're just going to lose now. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had seven material turn skip, but we felt the imperm. So we set up the sky bridge to play around the imperm, but then the droplet played around our sky bridge. Damn. Ain't that something? And then uh, we never even got impermanenced. The imperm just never happened. Further linking this up into the Promethean Princess. The best deck having a great turn one and turn two. How fair. Really balanced. Summoning Flame Burst in the deck. Pushing Mascarina into the back row. Not pushing Durendal on the field into the back row. So we're not going for lethal damage. Okay. Couldn't put 8,000 up. Wipe them up. We have the ability to Mascarina link off during the opponent's turn. Why didn't he activate the Exceed? So what happens is he already activated the Sky Bridge. The, so if he activates to skip the turn, he chains impermanence, he chains Sky Bridge, you're probably playing paper because that's illegal. It, was, it can only be activated once per turn. All right, let's go. We have our own imperm, which is blocked by our Constellar Telenites. Syria. The problem is in order to get seven material, you pretty much have to use the Sky Bridge to help you get that seven material. So you then can't use the Sky Bridge to protect your seven material. Instead of being upset, you should be happy that it's this way. 
Because if skipping your turn was common, then you'd be complaining that Teller Knight keeps on skipping your turn on the ladder, right? Shokan to the goddess, it sync, oh, I should sync her in exceeding. All right, let me go through all the summon types until I'm correct. Linking with the opponent's field. Come forth and negate. The entire field also we can negate, summoning from the graveyard. And just like that, we got 2 0 Snake Eye, tier one versus tier one. Now, even though they're both tier one, not all tier ones are treated equally. The tier one of Snake Eye is at a power level of 30.5, where Branded Despia is at 15. What this means is a pie of tournament topping decks, Snake Eye is 30.5% of the tournament topping decks, and Branded Despia is about 15%. Sending from the deck, and uh, it, it, it the pie is within about two weeks. Two weeks of tournament topping decks, and that's how large it is. Grab back the Branded Loss, the effects of the Retribution by banishing it. Branded Loss will make it so we cannot respond with Impermanence on the Fusion Summon. This counters the Imperm, very well done. We can't Imperm the Albion Sanctifier anyway. On summon, the Lost is grabbing an Albaz from the deck as we set up a Banishment. Banishment could trigger the Lost to then grab a Mercurier. What do we have in the graveyard here? We could summon an Albaz. We're imperming early. I, I guess it would be onto the Cartesia because Cartesia could only activate within the main phase to Fusion Summon. So I don't, I don't think we were trying to do this on the Albion. This is correct. This is fine. Turn off Cartesia. Sure. Now, Cartesia can make Gangrenol. Gangrenol could send Puppet. Puppet can be summoned with Albion, and Puppet turns them off from being able to sum, special summon anything. So that's what we turned off. Let's get to it. Poplar on being added. Come forth and summon. The Sanctifier is untargetable and ready to be summoning that Albaz to fuse with the opposing fields. But when? Once there's a monster from the extra deck, we could summon a Mirror Jade. So with that Link Karibo, we may want to Albion soon. We could Albion in response to a Flame Burge effect. Flame Burge can't target the Albion, but if we wait for Flame Burge to be sent to the graveyard, that is when we could start popping off. Phoenix on summon, wiping out the Lost, so the Banishment Lost play of grabbing a Mercurier is now gone. Flame Burge? We're not using the Sanctifier yet. Okay, we're waiting. Reborn Quem with the Banishment. Maxi is good against Branded Despia on their turn and on your own turn as they love the special summon during both turns. We are reborning the Albaz plus the opponent's Maxi. We're going to use the Albaz to fuse with the Phoenix. Discarding Albaz with Albaz. First, we're fusing with the Branded Banishment into the Gangrenol. Gangrenol is here. Albaz triggering, discard, fusing with the Phoenix, as we said. Quem being triggered because a monster left the extra deck to reborn a monster from the grave. Gangrenol send a level six from the deck or extra deck to the grave, sending the sprint, which will summon an Albaz or add one during the end phase. Mirror Jade, non target monster banish is ready. This is all under Maxi, by the way. Quem reborn, the Mercurier is not just a hand trap, it's also a field trap. We're going to be able to negate which we're gonna have to negate the Anima if we want to. Negate, <laughs> okay. Pretty cool that we had Anima to stop that negate because uh, it, it's so crazy all the things you have to account for in a Yu-Gi-Oh duel and for the mismanagement of the Mercurier position being kind of a, a misplay here, that's wild that that's even a thing. To have to have the foresight to ensure that you're you're already probably inherently already playing around this extra monster slot column by not summoning your mirror jade there, but then your Mercurier getting disrupted by the Anima, like damn. Discard a card to summon the Jet Synchron. Gangrenol being triggered because a monster was summoned through a monster effect, summoning a Coritus, which could reduce the entire opposing field to zero attack. So we are likely going to survive this turn no matter what. But the Unicorn could spin the Coritus, which will not trigger because it's being spun to a private knowledge area. No, we're going for the Mirror Jade instead. Now, Mirror Jade also will not trigger if sent to the extra deck to wipe out the field during the end phase. Goodbye to Unicorn. We have an Albion, which will be activating during the end phase. Diablo Star, discard a card or send from the field to the grave to come forth and summon, setting up a wanted to be used during the next turn. Further linking this up into a Promethean Princess. Do we have any more disruption? We have nothing. The Sanctifier activated. The Coritus could still reduce the field to zero attack. We're waiting on that. So we're going to force the Coritus to activate now. 
And Kritus is not leaving the field when it goes to the back row, so it does not activate to summon from the deck. Now we go into our Amblo Whale. And then we Nibiru? What the heck? Nibiru after the Whale because the Promethean Princess was stopping our Nibiru from being summoned. And let's go. Call by the Grave kept in the hand so that we could negate and banish the Albion effect. Thank you very much. Negate. Finger that fool. Kit can grab a banished or engraved branded fusion. Returning the other card we have in our hand back in the deck. It's special summonable if we have an Albaz fusion in the grave. Imperm negate. Just like that. Now, the token cannot be used to make a uh, Verte Anaconda because it has to be an effect monster. So you'd have to play Link Spider, then go into Anaconda if you had branded fusion in the deck still. Wanted is going to be grabbing a Diablo Star during the end phase. Do we have any effects in the grave that are activatable? We could draw a card with the Wanted by returning the Sinful Spoils back into the deck. Now, what's crazy about this combo of the Sinful Spoils and the Wanted in the grave, you're not choosing to search your deck or draw a card. You could do both. So if you activate the original Sinful to first search for a level one fire, which could be a Curry car if you want to, you then return the banished original Sinful back into the deck to draw a card after activating its effect. What the hell? Now, return the banished original to get that draw effect. Drawing into our effect veiler here after searching for an Ash. And let's get popping off. We are going to be counting up for Nibiru on summon number two. The original Sinful cannot be activated again. It's one or the other effect, you can't use both. We're on summon number three. Hida could steal a fire monster from the opponent's grave. So we are in a weird position where if we Nibiru, we'll trigger the field spell, which will summon the flame burst from the back row. But now we already sent it to the grave for Diablo Star, so maybe we don't have to worry about that now. We're on summon number four. The flame burst will summon number five, number six. And we have to do it now. If we don't do it now, that is when Apollo USA could be summoned, which would be negating the Nibiru. So on the resolution, we got to do it. We got to do it, right? We got to do it. We wait for the trigger effect, wait for it to summon. We're not doing it. Okay, now we have to do it. The Boar Lord cannot negate Nibiru. On the resolution is only when it can negate after equipping a link. Tribute the field. Should we have summoned an Apollo USA while we could have, which would have stopped the Nibiru potentially? Discard a card, summon the Jet Synchron from the grave, then end our turn. Look at the impact of Nibiru on both players here. Fusion deployment off the top of the deck. Okay. Reveal a fusion, then summon, and you cannot special summon for the extra deck for the rest of the turn. You can only activate one per turn. By having a monster on the field, it's still activatable, but we're not doing it. Again, the original Sinful, searching our deck for a level one fire because the card is really balanced and fair. We're also going to draw a card after searching. Just a free plus two. Draw. You think Pot of Greed's good? What if Pot of Greed says search your deck plus draw one? That'd be better, right? Well, we just did that. Pot of Greed's also just a plus one. That was a plus two. All right, come to us, Original Sinful, and we have a nice 8250 token on the field here. Just over 14,000 attack, no biggie. And let's wipe it up. <laughs> we have the new best deck defeating the X best deck for game one. Into game two we go. Engage with more generic, you know, even engage is just a plus one. Branded in high spirits is going to be adding. This is a card you would want to be activating within the draw phase. You could turn on your toggle settings where at the start of the duel and at the end of your turns, your toggle automatically goes to on. I do recommend that, especially if you want to maxi in the draw phase against Diablo Star instead of them just hard summoning it. But then you are playing into Gamma by doing so. We're going to be ashing the C, letting our branded fusion go through without them drawing per special summon. Now this plays into Bestial, but they don't got a Bestial. We're going to be banishing the Albaz from the Graveyard, plus the Gangrenal, going straight into the Mirror Jade, foregoing our Lubellian play. Now our Triple Tactics Thrust is activatable to set up a Fusion Duplication in the back row. Set it up, Duplication and Lost. The Lost will be triggered to search our deck, 
but the Lost will not give you the protection of your opponent not being able to respond to your Fusion Summon off of Duplication. Give Ash on Summon, searching for the Poplar, Poplar being triggered. No, we're passing on the trigger. We said no to make a Link Karibo. Bro, what the heck happened? If your toggle's on off, it won't ask you to Poplar. <laughs> if your toggle's on off and your Poplar gets sent to the grave or you summon your Poplar, it will activate. Public triggers will activate with your toggle off. Private triggers, like ones in your hand, will not activate if your toggle's on off. Is that what happened here? <laughs> Let's get to it. Temple, set up Ash into the back row, send the Ash. We're gonna Ash, the original Sinful. Shemi's got no plays, Shemi's got nothing. That's it, that Ash shut down that turn completely. Oh my gosh. We have Maxi, but no way to stop that Maxi. So what you would do as a Branded Fusion player against Maxi is you would just activate Branded Fusion to summon the Albion Sanctifier, which would, pro that's gonna be the best play. Yep, and then you stop there. They get one draw, you have a great fusion that is Disruption. Also the Branded Loss giving you a Mercurial Monster Negate. That is great. Now, if you were a Mad Lad with Titan Clad and Nibiru, you could boost up the Titan Clad to, uh, how big does it get? Titan Clad in, in sending Nibiru would uh, be game, if I, I think, right? How much damage did we have there? If we go, we summon Albion, and then Albion summon uh, Banish for Nibiru. You send Nibiru for Albion, and then you banish Nibiru for Titan Clad. I think that's 8,000 damage, right? We did have game, if we wanted to, if we played Nibiru. But, you know, if they had a disruption in the hand to stop that play, then you'd be afraid to do it. Snake Eyes Ash on Summon, Mercurial get negated. Negate! Now, it's not fully negated. We can still summon an Oak from the deck. We're gonna search our deck for a level one fire, which will be the Poplar, which will still trigger here. Which makes me second guess using that Mercurial, knowing that the original Sin was in the grave. Chaining the Maxi in response to the special summon. We are drawing for special summon now, so what is Shelmy willing to do? Are we going to try to push through and lethal the field? We're gonna have to do a large Zelantis play. Zelantis banish the whole field, then going for AK. We do have the play, but not through disruption is what I'm thinking. Oak reborn. Albion can reborn what you're trying to reborn, which I think we're still reborning it for you, right? <laughs> you don't get to summon Ash, I'll summon your Ash. Then we're gonna use Albaz to then fuse with the Link Rebo to go into a Mirror Jade. So we stop the Oak by doing what the Oak was doing. Lost is being triggered, grabbing an Albion, which is essentially an upstart goblin for next turn, plus getting an, a branded spell trap from the deck into the back row. We're gonna force out the activation of the duplication, copying the effect of the branded fusion to set up even more disruption. We have non-target monster banished with Mirror Jade. And we are setting up to summon Rinbrum, which can negate an extra deck monster like Promethean Princess. So when the Promethean Princess activates, we'll negate and push her back into the extra deck. Flame Burrs reborning two level one fires in the graveyard. This is where we negate the princess is what I'm thinking, right? Or we're just gonna non-target monster banish before she even activates. Oak is sending itself, plus the field's about to summon from the deck our Flame Burrs dragon. Eight plus level one tuner. We generally do not play. Holy moly, what is going on? What the? Do we have enough for game? The field spell, I think, would have made this game because field spell will boost her up by plus 1100. We push the Rinbrum, which could only negate an extra deck monster, and every monster that had already activated is tributed for the Curry Kara. We're at 5,000 damage, which will be exactly 8,000. But we have a Serenir to stop lethal. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Stopping the lethal attack. Shelmy is out. Exact lethal. Not even needing the field spell to baboost. Damn. Camellia on summon, sending the tree, which is limited to one in TCG. Come to me, our cricket, but we already normal summoned. 
So we're gonna use our droplet to special summon a Huggin. Huggin on summon, discard a card from the hand, discard that cricket. Imperm, negate the Huggin from searching for the field spell, which we know is limited to one. So there's not gonna be another one in the hand. So this is a safe Imperm, unless they got the tip. With the tip, we are searching for our limited to one field spell, which we could trigger with the curses, but we can't if there's a monster in the extra monster zone. So we could have synchroed if we wanted to, otherwise we could just wait to use the curses during their turn. Monadium Imaginings is gonna be revealing a Monadium card, draw two, return a card back in the deck. Rhymeheart on summon could get negated by the curses, but first we're triggering the Camellia, then adding the curses on top of it. So I talked about this earlier today, on trigger effects and quick effects. What would happen here is it's not gonna ask you to use curses. It will ask you to only use Camellia. And whether you say no or yes with Camellia, then you can activate curses. It will then show you afterward. That is trigger versus quick effect. So you may be thinking, why can't I use curses? Well, Camellia wants to activate first. We are going to chain our Rhymeheart to pop Rhymeheart to dodge the curses. And we're gonna cross out, designate, negate the maxi. Negate. Damn. Rhymeheart, pop, Rhymeheart. That is a spicy meatball. Now, the curses still activated, still resolves. Even though it didn't negate, it's still going to trigger the fountain to draw up to three cards. Yup, return three, draw three. Ash, negate. We had no trigger effect to chain link block. Now we're going to chain Cricket to summon up to two monsters from the deck. One of them will be a double negate. Yup. Sunflower is negate and destroy and do it twice. But you can just battle into it and then uh, it's very easily dealt with unless you summon your Rhymeheart in defense. Uh, did we have to summon Rhymeheart in defense? We did not. So we kind of messed that up. I think so. Mill the top two for our first negate and destroy. I did not announce the leak yet. It'll be right after this match. Yeah, the little zero defense sunflower we needed to swing over. Astral out on summon could activate to then get negated by the sunflower. So we're forcing the activation so we don't lose our battle phase. We want to have our battle phase. This is it. We're out of disruption. We're done. It is over. We can now go full wombo combo. So by summoning the monster in defense, it looks like it was not a mistake as we want to make the full play right here, right now. Trisukta could reborn a ball from the grave. Cricket could reborn onto the field from the opponent summoning a monster from the extra deck, but it's not adding any disruptions to the fields. Let's do it. And then we make the Vsauce Amritira. Amritira on summon will search for a Vsauce spell or trap, any Vsauce spell or trap. Grabbing the Obsidian, which could pop our monster to search for a field spell. Amritira going into the Lightheart. Lightheart searching for the Scareclaw field spell. Let's speed this up. Scareclaw Field Spell, searching for a Scareclaw. Right card summoned to where the Light Heart is in the same column, grabbing an arrival, plus drawing a card, because there's three monsters on the field in defense, using the Field Spell to pop a card in the field, but the Field Spell is going to be protected by the Hug and banishing itself. The Obsidian popping our monster to grab the Monadium Field Spell, grabbing a Vsauce Starfrost, which is a hard once per turn, is it not? Yeah, we can't use its effect again, but we could use the Obsidian to special summon it from the hand. As a level 6 tuner, plus our level 4 non-tuner, we could make a Baron to floor here. Lightheart searching for the field spell, but it is a hard once per turn, not activatable again. Baron to floor is ready. Let's do it. Arrival, arrive back into the field. Our Reichhardt as we link this off into a cross sheep. Do we have a second copy of the Astraloud? Yes, we do. Banishing to summon Astraloud to trigger the cross sheep to reborn from the grave. Damn, Monadium is popping off. On summon, also not a hard once per turn, could pop again. Double pop in one turn, taking out the Camellia. All we have left is a zero defense cricket, which is actually nothing because the Baron to floor wipes it up. All of that through a curses and a double monster negate, and we had lethal damage. Turn two, triple disruption, lethal damage. Monadium. If you don't max C or draw them, that's what they do. Runic to, I'd say Brand Despia plays better against Maxi than Snake Eyes does. With Snake Eyes, you're gonna want to try to at least make a Mascarina with the Flame version to the back row, ideally. So that would be draw two, and then you have a Mascarina plus Flame Burst with a field spell. It's just not bad. They get two and you still have a great field. Infinite spell negates. 
as long as we have two cards in our deck to mill, we can negate, 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 do it more than once per turn or even once within the chain. We're going to be popping the ball with the Vsauce, ball summon a ball from the deck as a level two or four. We're going into the Vsauce Amaterra with two tuners. Two tuner making the Vsauce. We're gonna use the Cricket to summon two monsters from the deck. Now, unfortunately, the Sunflower's in the hand. So the monster negate, we drew it. This is not good. Camellia sending a tree from the deck to the grave, which will trigger the tree to grab from the deck a Cricket. And to battle we go, wiping out the Naturia Beast just like that. It at least ate up the battle phase. So it didn't do nothing. It did something. It ate the battle phase. Cricket being triggered off of you summoning a monster from the extra deck. We're going to mill the top two cards of our deck to summon. Oh, yeah. Also, we, no, 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 we're, we're, we're triggering the effect. What the heck? So the Cricket on field effect to tribute, that is what you do to mill. So the Camellia, if your opponent normal or special summons, you reborn an Aturia monster from your graveyard back on the field. Now we're back to negate. You didn't use Cold Buy. Oh my gosh. It's non-target. It's special summon any Naturia. Because you didn't target the beast, as soon as we selected the beast, you couldn't finger the beast. Oh gosh. He didn't know. He didn't know. And this is the benefit of playing a deck that people are unfamiliar with. You have a non-target reborn, reborning the beast, and we didn't even see it coming. Wow. That's wild. Because normally the Camellia does not summon an Aturia beast from the graveyard. Of course it does if it's there. It normally summons something else. And now we have double monster negate. If you were to have hand traps, we got negate, negate. Double up the negate. We do not have a battle phase though. So we're just gonna be setting up a, a way to protect the Sunflower plus protect the Natura Beast. Infinite Spell Negate plus double Monster Negate. What else can we do here? We have a level 10 Synchro, Baron to Floor, Chang Ying, Ani Negate, Infinite Spell Negate, double Monster Negate, pop in the Light Heart. And we also have another Monster Negate in the hand plus pop a Field Spell on its activation, but we're going to negate it anyway. Negate, Gamma, Negate, the Negate. But then negate the negate, negating the negate. Negate with the sunflower. And we have another negate where that came from. Are we negating the Scarecrow Cashier also? No, we're letting it go through. That's fine. We could negate the Scarecrow Cashier with the curses, then it can't attack while on defense. And just like that, field spell with the infinite negate. Yep, curses. <laughs> You can't attack while on defense. What are you doing, mate? Return three, draw three, balance. Now I wanna clarify, I think that this is a healthy use of runic where the deck is not being used to deck you out or being filled to the brim with floodgates. Is Natura Beast a floodgate itself? Yes, in a way it definitely is, so maybe that itself is the problem, but the runic cards were not a problem there. Minadium field spell grabbing our rhyme heart. The right card, if we impermanent, we could chain the rhyme heart to dodge the impermanence. So we do want to be careful with that. When is it best to imperm? Triple Monster Negate plus Omni Negates. Can we play through for Disruptions? Let's see, let's see. Discard a Sacred Tree with the Huggin, so we could trigger the tree to search for a Naturia card. We'll use one of our Negates, now down to three. Total, there's two more on Apollo, one on the Baron. And we are now grabbing a Cricket. Cricket will be negated by the Baron to Floor. We're going to use the Flash Fire to attempt to negate. I should say destroy the negator. And the Baron to Floor is going to negate the Special Summon Destroy. Now down to double negates. Cricket negates. Blessing could reborn the Cricket. But we already used the hard once per turn effect of the Cricket. So what does it do? It's going to be summoning during the opponent's turn. And uh, this is not so good. The tree could tribute the cricket to summon a plant from the deck. Baron to floor, popping the huggin. Huggin returning back to the extra deck. 
We uh, we just have the Apollo USA, which we'll be able to negate. Field spell grabbing the Scare Claw, Cash Tira. We're going to chain Sacred Tree, tributing the Cricket to summon from the deck, I believe, a Camellia, right? Could tribute Cricket to summon Camellia. Now, we didn't use Cricket to summon Camellia because it would have been negated by the Apollo USA. And the Camellia is being double triggered here. So you have to carefully choose. It's on summon trigger plus the opponent summon trigger. Which trigger do you want to protect? We will be able to not have one of them get negated. And uh, which one is it? The first one is the opponent is on summon. So we're going to be able to special summon a Naturia from the grave. But our effect to send a card from the deck is going to be negated. So we're going to reborn the cricket. And if they use the Apollo say, I think it's a mistake. This is a mistake because what we're trying to do is we're trying to trick them into summoning Cricket, and then if you wasted your Apollo USA, we're going to use Cricket to summon the Sunflower to then double Monster Negate. Did not negate, so we didn't fall for it. Very well done. That was correct. Tree activate. Cricket is going to be negated by the Apollo, so you do want to save it for that. Pop the Cricket. Ooh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's still hard once returned. We're going to negate. So we milled the top cards of our deck. It's not going to be activatable again anyway. So no Sunflower, double Monster Negate. That's fine, and uh, that's it. That's really it. Let's go. Wait, we don't have lethal damage? <laughs> oh, this is not good. The Apollo USA is not a disruption. We're ending our turn with zero disruption. Now we could use the Baron to Floor to reborn a monster during the standby phase, which we're not doing. Cricket is going all in. That Gamma is dead in the hand. Double Camellia, send a Sunflower, which could then reborn the Sunflower. Exiton Knight. This is Zeus 0.5, wiping the entire field. Only if your opponent has more cards on the field and in the hand, you deal zero battle damage to make the card more balanced, of course. Nice. Gia was so excited for this card or Evil Swarm because it says Evil Swarm, but then everyone wanted it. Then the card became a hundred freaking dollars. Natura Blessing, Reborn Camellia, Camellia not activating. I think we're out of trees to send from the deck to the grave. We now have our Naturia Beast. The reframing is dead. It requires you to have a Synchro Monster on the field in order to negate anything. And not quite lethal. We are going to, do we have a Camellia left in the deck? We need Camellia. So let's say they activate an effect to special summon a monster. You would chain Cricket, special summon Camellia. Camellia would then be on the field before the monster special summon, which would trigger the effect to summon a Sunflower, which would be double monster negate. And we also have the flash fire to destroy a special summon monster. We are in a good spot. Plus our infinite spell negate. Set. <laughs> Set. That's it. Set. Do not use a runic card. We would lose our battle phase. We still can't deal lethal damage. We're just slowly poking down the opponent. We're going to have to use Exiton Knight to attack into the draw and lock bird to go Naturia Beast for game. We have a Camellia left in the deck, right? We do. We could use Cricket. We're just waiting. To battle we go, Naturia Beast for game. Had we drew into a spell for Naturia Beast to negate, we could have used Gamma to negate the negate. Then we could have went into Excel Stardust Dragon, into Baron to Floor, into Wham Bam Thank You Ma'am. We actually wanted a spell for him to negate. Damn. Wanted Seeker grabbing a Diablo Star from the deck within the draw phase to play around the Droll, but now how do we play around Nibiru? We keep on talking about how do we counter Nibiru. Nibiru is going to be not so effective if you set up your field spell plus a flame version to the back row effectively. So we are on summon number two. We are on summon number three. Okay, we haven't set up the field spell yet. We want to make sure we set that up. Activate the field spell, get the flame burge into the back row. We're going to use the spoils to send our Link Rebo to summon our Ash. Ash will add the Poplar. Poplar will activate to summon itself onto the field. Now we're on summon five. Is it safe to Nibiru? Well, that would trigger the flame burge to summon itself onto the field, so you do want to be careful about that. Oak sending itself plus the Poplar, summoning another flame burge. If we Nibiru now, they'll summon two level one fires, so you don't really want to do that, right? Now there's Mascarina. So when is even a good time to Nibiru? There kind of isn't. <laughs> okay, so you Nibiru right now, which triggers the field spell to summon Flamebirds, which then puts the Mascarina into the back row, which you're still going to summon during the opponent's turn. And Nibiru ensures that you can't use impermanence onto Mascarina nor the Flamebirds, so they really don't even care. Not that much. 
but can Mascarina even summon an Apollo USA here? We have a token. If we read the Apollo USA, it states that accept tokens. So some people are playing, I, I saw someone play Link Spider where they could put the token into Link Spider and that could be beneficial for being used with the Mascarina to make an Apollo USA. It also could be useful to use the original Sinful Spoils to have a card on the field that you could send to the Graver since you can't send a token to the Grave. So those could be two reasons why you maybe want to play that. Mascarina, let's go. Link off into the Hita. We are going to be triggering the Flame Burst, Summon for the Grave, Oak and Poplar. Poplar, add Oak Summon from the Grave. We cannot Ash the Poplar since it's been chain link blocked by the Oak, which is Bellable instead. Very nice. We got full house, almost. Wait, that's not full house. Three of a kind. <laughs> Should Yu-Gi-Oh have some mechanics where I used to play Versus System, and if you drew multiple copies, you could discard Wolverine to boost up Wolverine on the field so that drawing multiple copies was not that big of a problem. One of my favorite card games that died. He does here, steal a fire monster from the opponent's graveyard, drop the lit, negate the Hida. So we're not stealing. We are have already used up our normal summon. We are pretty freaking screwed. What the heck? <laughs> we were the one with Nibiru. Now, this will be adding a card from the deck after being destroyed. Ooh, Curry Kara. Both of you activated. Curry Kara could steal a monster during the opponent's end phase. If there's a Flame Burge that we could steal, that Flame Burge could then steal the opponent's back row during their turn if we want to. We're instead going to grab a Mascarina. With the Mascarina, we unfortunately could not make something like an Apollo USA. We could go into Unicorn. Yeah, we don't go Promethean Princess, right? We Unicorn this. On summon, Unicorn, discard Poplar, trigger Poplar. Spin the Flame Burge back into the deck. We don't... Wait, do we spin Hida instead? Maybe Hida would have been better. Hida's about to steal a card from our grave. We're just in so much trouble. This is not good. So Fictinium, playing through Nibiru and uh, coming out on top. Very well done. Both players using the Curry Kara Divine Carnet. Very nicely done. Well played. Finish him. All right. I think this is the final duel before the top eight, I believe. Poplar is here. Baylor negate, which will now allow our triple tactics talent to look at the hand to then spin a card back, or we could draw two. We probably want to draw because our hand is not so good. Wow, we're, we're taking a gander. Get that Baylor out of here. Wait, that was a special summon Poplar. How to get special summoned? No, 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 oh, oh, oh the Birch, Birch is special son. A uh, correction, correction. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this still sucks. This still is not good. I thought we would draw two anyway. Yeah, Birch is uh, kind of bad. Okay. Ash on summon, which will be triggering our draw and lockbird, which, by the way, draw and lockbird is not a trigger effect. It's a quick effect. Get negating. And you do not get to search for the Poplar, but you could still make some pretty damn good plays. Poplar will equip into the back row, making it usable with the Ash to send to the grave to then summon an Oak, Oak Reborn. Now, the Oak is not a Garnet. It's summonable from the hand or deck, as we see right here. Oak send the Link Haribo, and with the Flame Burge, we could make something like a Mascarina to trigger its effects. We're going to push the Hida into the back row, making our own Hida to steal a fire monster from the opposing graveyard. Reborn, reborn. We don't have the field spell to boost up our field, though. As we now make a Promethean Princess, reborning our Flame Burge from the grave. What do we have for damage here? We got 7,300 lethal if the Poplar was not negated. Damn. Okay. 700 damage. What could we have done? We could have made a Code Breaker. Code Breaker before Promethean, and that would have been game. Let's get to it. Drop the Lit. We do have the ability of Flame Burge to reborn the opposing monster's Birch. Wait, you steal your opponent's Birch? You then use Birch to send your own card to summon an Ash or an Oak? Whoa. Thank you, YouTube, for watching the full Top 16. The Top 8 Grand Finale and Top Decklist will be up next in another video. Look out for that. Appreciate it. Let's do it.